Oh my God. Can we just not Jenga? I'm like, dude, if I see one well, more Jenga tower, do you know how about I just want to fucking <laughs> every Jenga tower? Every time I see a Jenga tower, shut up! Not bad for a fat guy. <laughs> oh my They're picking life. up, man. Oh my life. They're, they're, TG. they're, they're T- figuring it out. T unit. TG96. 97. Oh shit. T unit. TG97. 7777. 97. What's up? Can we just talk about Matthew Judon's red sleeves real quick? That's all. Why, why are they so baggy? They're just so good, man. I don't know. I love them. Nobody else does it like that. It it only works for him. I don't think anyone else has even tried it. I guess that that New England Patriots red like does pop a little different, though. Like when Edelman used to have red gloves, it was I like, think, oh. Oh. I think it would. I think it really only works for a pass rusher like that. Really? Yeah. Like his, you his, always his full see aesthetic, him. the sing, the, 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 the single digit pass rusher with the baggy sleeve, like it just works. It just works. And like a guy like that's always on the screen. Like every single time you look at the TV, he's right there. Always there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not that this is a sports podcast or anything. What's up, bro? That's true, man. Hey, uh, why don't you do push tickies real quick? I Raleigh. Got a shuck coming up. Bro, 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 Raleigh. He's doing all his own sound effects today. Raleigh, Thursday. Can't wait to see you guys. Uh, merch, pickies after the show. Let's party. Mm. Buffalo had to change the date. It's not September 19th anymore. Um, it's in November. I'll get I'll get details on that ASAP. Uh, Tex, Austin, Texas, October 10th. San Diego, November 7th. And Phoenix, Arizona, December 5th. I'll see you guys there. Tickets, BenedictPolizzi.com. Hell yeah. And uh, I sent to Ben this morning. People who run our stuff sent over some dates, some times, some cities of what we're looking to lock in for these guys on the road. Um, so won't have anything until won't have a show until October if as as is just because it's been, you know, we've been trying to get it figured out and we want time to push tickies for everybody out there. So September's like two weeks away. So September is off the board. We're going to uh, fire it up there in a spooky season. Um, so that's coming. That's that that is that's very much like Charles Barkley said, them boys coming. That's coming. Um, yeah. So in the oh, meantime, buy no. tickets to Ben's show. And then we'll let you know as soon as we know on these guys, bro. I was in, uh, I was in Saratoga over the weekend. Let's talk Saratoga, about Saratoga, New York, and it was a hell of a time. Uh, big shot. I went out there by myself. I didn't have any plus one. Like I, they gave me a plus one. I had a full table uh, up in the clubhouse, not TG Clubhouse. I wish it was TG Clubhouse, but at uh, the track there, I had a full table, and I was just there by myself because like Riley couldn't come, my dad couldn't come, like Dylon, few other people couldn't come. So I was like, oh, I'll just do this myself, whatever. And best weekend so I of your go life out there. And then I, <laughs> so I run into it. It really, it was a real you weekend, man. Like I went out there. I got out there Friday morning, early ass flight on Friday. I get out there, and the whole day I just bounce back and forth from like three different coffee shops, just like work, editing videos, writing. Like just it was, it was really great, honestly. And then Saturday, I go to the track because I got my obligations. I got to do there. Big shout out to Jared and Peter from Saratoga and uh, Matt. Uh, They took me under their wing. They ran into me. Whoa, dude, what are you doing here? I saw on Twitter you were here. I love your stuff, blah, blah, blah. Took me in, right? So I had buddies the whole day. Oh, you ran into the boys. They adopted you. Yeah. They adopted me. Do what you do at a racetrack, a horse track. You know, we were drinking. We were betting on ponies. We were running but anyways i went out to the start finish line with jared uh for one race and that's like right there right and that's where a bunch of 
the public and everybody goes. And uh, man, there was clubhouse everywhere. There's people stopping me all over the place. Shut up! I love your podcast. There was a there was a burpee girl. No a way! Girl who stopped me at a and horse like, race? Oh my god, you! Yeah, they're like she was like you and Benny's podcast. Oh my god, it was like a burpee girl in Saratoga. Dude, we got reach. It was insane, dude. We got reach. Took a pic. Um, so shout out to everybody at Saratoga over the weekend. It was a hell. Of, I went into it a little skeptical because I was just like, man, I might just be Steven Glansberg in this like by myself here looking like a putz. And uh, you guys took me in and we had a great freaking time and it was awesome. And yeah, so I just want to let you know, there's a few people that I saw that uh, actually. So Friday night, I went to a Mexican restaurant by myself that was right perfect, behind my hotel. Perfect. Perfect. So I, yeah, I went, sat at the bar, got a couple margs, was just chilling. But I ran into a guy who he listens to the show too. And he was like, Oh dude, I, I went and saw me. And my wife went and saw Benny in Albany uh, when he was there. Oh my God. And was, yeah. And I was like, Oh man, that's awesome. And so, uh, yeah, dude, it was just a hell of a time up there in upstate New York over the weekend. That's insane. That sounds, that sounds like the best weekend ever. Just running into clubhouse all willy yeah. nilly. Willy nilly running into clubhouse, Dude. making a little money, losing a little bit of money, drinking, like didn't have dad duty all weekend, was in a new area, you know, I had my hat game going. Like it was a great time. I saw that. Time. How'd you feel? How'd you feel about the fit? Can we rate the fit? I felt real good because like it was, you know, it's not like Churchill where, you know, or like the Derby where a race like that where like you really got to like full suit, full everything. Like most of the people that were at Saratoga were honestly just in like cargo shorts and polo shirts, you know? So I was like, what the? I didn't get to hear that. Damn. I know. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I say this every time I, I uh, pop, a, pop a drink. Get him up. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I felt, I felt good. I felt it was like a, I felt it was like a 8.3 out of 10. Can't, can't really get any better. I was than comfortable. That. Can't really was get any better than that. Your own hotel room? Yeah. Just sitting there and just laying there on a bed with your feet crossed. What'd you have on? Yes, Bro, so ESPN News. Do you remember ESPN no, News dude, days? Had, yeah, the, the ESPN News studio. It was like smaller. I loved ESPN News, bro. So many letters down there. ESPN news. So many, so many scores too. That's all it was, was just scores. I know, but it was like when something stupid was on sports center and something or ESPN and something really dumb was on ESPN too. You could always count on ESPN news to just like have what you wanted. I was like, there's no like, That's what I'm saying there's no, there's no BS. It's just like, boom, boom. Sometimes yeah. it's like only four things that replay on there, but those are the four things I want. It was like, it was, it was like, uh, Sports Center TikTok before TikTok. Like you just go there and you just like know what you're getting. It's quick. It's easy. I know, man. The hey, the ESPN two, the old ESPN two logo with that big two. How sick was that? Um, <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking sick. about. You don't know what I'm talking about. Hold on. Oh, hundred percent I do. Okay, yeah, okay, I do. okay. Never mind. Just remember going to ESPN News just to wait on the bottom line and see the Cubs box score and see if Sammy Sosa hit another home run. Just me that was watching. Like big. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> hey, this is the most this is the most this is the most not a sports podcast thing of all time, but our outside linebackers coach in high school is like, you gotta be able to read the guard. And you're in your uh, your gap, or I don't know. It was like you're supposed to be able to see two things as once as an as an outside linebacker. I don't know what they were. And uh, he's like, you can train yourself by watching ESPN and watching the bottom line at the same time. <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's what his analogy was. I was like, I don't play linebacker, but I'm doing that tonight. <laughs> it's just it's just good to have that skill. I'm just watching Whether Kenny Maine and I'm like the Angels won. All right, cool. Padres lost. Mm -hmm. Way too many baseball games. Okay, check. All right. Uh Mike Mike uh, or Troy Gloss hit a home run. Okay, cool. Who is he? Got it. <laughs> Dude, also, well, I took a couple notes too. You inspired me last week. In case so, so I took a couple notes, but so we can, we can get into those in a little bit. But can't wait. Also, went to the went to the doctor last week, 
I've dropped 17 pounds, dude. Oh, on what? You look good. Uh, but like how? Thanks. How'd you do it? Well, like that's been like a pretty common theme, like over the last like six months or so, I'd say six, seven months, like different relatives or different people that I'd meet up and like have dinner with, or even some people online actually have been like, man, you slimmed up, man. Like you look good. What's uh, did you know, you lose weight. And I was like, I mean, I think so. Like I see myself in videos and like on screen with these guys, you know, but like, and so what it comes down to is just like, uh, me and Rye eat a lot cleaner, like eat at home way more often, just like making chicken and like rice and veggies and like steak and shit like that. And then also like maybe once every two months at the the most right now in my life for the past seven eight months i'll have like an actual bender with the boys whereas like when frankie was just born or not being born like back in 2020 21 22 like mm -hmm. that was a pretty like multi-week occurrence where i was like starting to drink beer at noon and was not getting home until like midnight you know and so i just don't do that anymore what, what was um, your what'd you do at noon if you crack one open at noon like what's the, what's on t what what are you doing for that day is it like a college oh, football bro, day I mean, yeah like me and me and the boys are just like meet at somewhere on mass ave probably like world of beer at like noon wow be there for the be there for the first slate of games stop in somewhere after that for another round or three then go to rath skeller and do it all like that was pretty much it Oklahoma and, State, uh, Iowa State at World of Beer. See you at noon. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. Who's not going? Um, two kids under two. Uh, can't really can't really do that very often. Uh, so I've cut that out. I uh, only drink Diet Dr. Pepper. I don't really drink like the actual you, soda anymore. You're so off that's DC? Like 150. Yeah. That's like 150 calories per soda that's gone. Uh, I've been doing intermittent fasting. Like I, I, I won't eat until afternoon and then i'll stop eating before seven dude you're more it. psycho than me so i i don't work out besides like going on family walks and walking to coffee shops and stuff nearby but like i just don't drink i drink about a quarter of the same amount as i used to and we eat at home of our own cooked meals way more you guys are so. you guys are dialed Bro, yeah, dude. 17 pounds, man. It's like I haven't been I haven't been this weight. Ooh, eighth, like gra eighth grade, eighth grade, 10 years, eighth ten grade years, made the weight limit. <laughs> I haven't been this thin since I could run the ball in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I couldn't run the ball in eighth grade. Dude, dude. that's I was fucking left guard. That's why I have body dysmorphia, dude. The running back weight limit in eighth grade. Such bullshit. Dude, give give it one more year. You're gonna be at every single Fourth of July pool party in the area. <laughs> Just grill why? Because of my body, grilled chicken guy. <laughs> now I'm cool to go to the rooftop party. Yeah, <laughs> the the pool rooftop party. Just you, wit. you and Halliburton at the wit. <laughs> yeah, right, dude. Halliburton runs with the crowd. I don't really get down with so. You know, you know, you know how it goes. You'll Matt be there. Cup. You'll but, be there. Yeah. All right. Um, you got any notes this week? Oh, let's see. I think I just burnt my. Uh, OK, Um. I've got a. <laughs> no, I don't. All it says is Matthew Judon's red sleeves. And if I could walk on water and that's it. <laughs> you go ahead. Hey, just Jason Werner flying over the is flying over the line of scrimmage with that song playing. If I could want You know what I'm talking about. Water. You know what I'm talking about. Dude, just what what went into like highlight tapes before if I could run. before like when you really had to make a highlight like tape before like people knew how to use iMovie and stuff like that. But those are the real geniuses right there splicing shit on vhs how are they doing it nobody knows i no remember idea. we like we no hired idea. like Don't a want to know we hired like a really good like a uh, digital vi videographer guy for our like senior season never saw the video <laughs> it's like you know you raise a bunch of money 
you know, you, you raise a bunch of money for some reason before like your senior football season to like pay for, I don't even know what, yeah, doing. pay for the hot dogs after the game. I was like, what are we raising the money for? Like, what are we paying for? I don't know. Like they bus us to the games. We're not getting new uniforms. Like what are we, what was all that money for? And I think like literally maybe, maybe like $6,000 we just gave to this guy to film all our games on a DVD net. The most mid season ever didn't even see the DVD. <laughs> I think yeah, the only thing I remember this is about a reminiscent podcast. No, nah, no. Uh, the only thing I remember about that entire year was just repainting the whole entire locker room. That's the only thing I remember about senior year of football. We did it for like two weeks. Right. Best two weeks yeah, of my life. Not, not that. Not that it's a reminiscent podcast, but yeah, you guys' senior year was pretty. Just kind of like. Nothing really happened. Like it, it happened, but nothing really happened. Nothing. The the least personality of all time. <laughs> I was like, did we even? We didn't even make a <laughs> dent in anything. We're not no. no me- <laughs> all right, I'm gonna. Sh- I'm just gonna shut up. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. We can let it. We can. <laughs> Senior superlative, though most athletic. Just saying. Nice. That was yours. Huh? That's what you got? <laughs> most athletic. Like, yeah. No. Nah. Just the just the most like let's just give them something ever. All right. <clears throat> Here's the notes that I have from over the the weekend. Can't wait. Uh number 1 IU black helmets with just the I and the U like side by side. Should have never went away from it. Luckily, a highlight clip of Antoine Randall House and like a option uh, pitch that he kept for like sixty yards showed up on my Twitter, and he was wearing those uniforms: white pants, red jerseys, or crimson, whatever, and black helmets with the circle logo with the I and then the U a little bit underneath it. Whenever I, I like, see wow. those, yeah, I'm like, is that even what team is that? That's a good look, man. That's a good look for Indiana. They they're going back to it. They have it. They have it now. They have black and red. I don't know if they have that logo, though, sadly. Mm. They wore black helmets? Is that starting this year? I think they did last year. Hmm. Let me but, look this up here, huh? But they still have the old logo. They're they're never going to go back to that IU logo. I don't know why. It was so cold. <laughs> Dude, this. Oh, my God. All right. Let me share screen here. Oh, you can do that? I don't know if I can, but I have to try because this picture just showed up. Damn it, where'd it go? Just I usually just do it on my phone because I have no idea how Zoom works and I never want to know. Yeah, but this is I think this is worth I think this is worth trying to figure this out here. All right. Nope. Actually, no, it's not. So I'm just going to find it on my phone, just like you said I should. I see right here there's an all-black uniform with the crimson helmet, but, I, yeah, I don't think they're going to the... Oh, they're, they're not black? To the, mm. uh, old black helmets. Mistake! It's just so funny how every, it's, everything's it's, going back to what it was. Obviously. This is, uh, this is blurry, but I think you're going to get it. Oh, yeah. That's all I think about. That's all I think. That's how you, dude. That's how you. Those numbers, perfect. Randall L. Randall L. In the end zone, celebrating with that black helmet with that logo. Hey, how'd they get them? How'd they get them? I know. I know. That's perfect. How'd they get them? And who else was even on that team? No one. I don't think anybody. I think he was just a one-man wrecking crew. Oh, I didn't even notice this, too. Some real nerd shit. The Indiana is, like, slanted as well. You see, it's got a little curve to it right there on the centerpiece of the chest. That's how they should all be. And they're (laughs) sports dorks who talk about uniforms. I don't really... Dude, it's the only thing I want to talk about ever. Is it nerdy to talk about that? I don't know. It's like fashion. Everybody shut up. But every... Like, now it just says Indiana's so big. I'm like, no... 
I could I could talk about it forever. I'm gonna shut up. You, you know what's a weird what's a weird phenomenon that's going on right now? And maybe you have some different uniform insight into it since this is really your world. What is with everybody going to the blocky straight across nameplate on the front of the chest? I know. I think Nike is like literally. Pushing that. I feel like every school has an alternate of that. Purdue. I'm like, that's not. Come on. I hated when they when Purdue did that. I was like, dude, no. The Lions. I'm like, I think like night like everybody's Purdue. everybody's going back. Everybody's doing throwbacks. You know what I mean? Like back to like classic stripes, stripes on pants. Everybody likes it. It's clean. But when you really think about throwback uniforms, they all did say the school name across the chest. Oklahoma State, you know, like a Barry Sanders. But like now, aesthetically, it doesn't look good. But Nike's trying to like really throw it back. And I think that's why they're doing all that. And Purdue back in the day did have that across their chest. But today they have it. And it's like it doesn't it doesn't look good. Like It just doesn't it doesn't fit. I know what you're saying. Yeah, the, they had it in the Rod Woodson and like the Jim Everett days. Like Sorry, back. Chris Everett days. Yeah, and on a mesh jersey that you're pulling up, like yeah, that that you're pulling up where your abs are showing. Yeah, that looks hard. Good. But on a modern, sleek jersey type, like it is, it doesn't. It looks weird. Thank you. Exactly. You need the the little Drew Brees joint mm-hmm. with the numbers up mm-hmm. high. That's Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> Purdue, talk. another great example of like, if it's not broke, don't fix it, bro. Like, I know you got Walters and it's a new era, but you really, I mean, the 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 get ups that you had rolling with is pretty damn good. Pretty tough to beat. They've kind of got it going on. Everything besides the name on the chest is good. I, I love Purdue's numbers. Again, black and gold. I mean, you can't really. With the you white, the white pops up. off so hard on that. You have to try to mess that up. Uh, other note that I took down, um, which I think will be more a little bit. Well, that what we just talked about was very clubhouse, but this will, this will maybe be a little bit more of even a broader reach here. Um, how about people just thinking that cornhole solves everything? <laughs> I hate cornhole, dude. <laughs> dude. Like, I don't even actually, I don't even really respect it that much either. Like, I'm bad at it. That's why I don't like it selfishly. But also, I like, it's a tough watch. If you're not playing and like, dude, it's just not a good idea to do it. You ever a hey, cornhole with a girl? Just just kiss your chances. Goodbye. So at this Mexican restaurant that I'm sitting at on Friday by myself in Saratoga, New York. I'm sitting next to like this this uh, these two ladies that are probably like anywhere from 56 to 58, yep. And then there was a a male with them that the what the, what I was gathering from over here because they were just a seat next to me at the bar, like you know at the bar you're you're basically in on everything. What I was gathering is that they were like all friends who had kids that grew up together and they've become like the super parent best friends, you know, oh, when like yeah. kids who yeah. hang out together, their parents become like best friends or neighbors or something like that. So they're sitting there and they're talking about hosting some event, having some gathering um, on their block or on their street. And the lady's just like, yeah, it'd be great. Like, you know, we'll be out front. Uh, you know, we'll have tables set up for food and drinks. Uh, we'll have cornhole. And it just sparked in me. I'm just like, everybody just thinks that it's like, yeah, we'll have cornhole. Okay. It's, no, it's nothing. Is that enticing me or is that turning me away? Yeah, just throw two corn, cornhole boards out there. You got a graduation party. <laughs> That's it. That's Bro, it. We were, we, we were at the state fair. And you know how they have the booths, you know, the tents to where like companies will go out there for their PR or whatnot. Cornhole. Like promo stuff. Dude, one company brought two cornhole boards and put it out in front. I'm like, who is stopping at your tent to play cornhole? 
And you just know that in the meeting when they're like, all right, so what do you want to, what do we think for state fair? We're going to have a tent out there. What do you think it'd be good? And somebody's like, oh, you know, it could be fun. You know, it could be fun. Is if we have a cornhole set up, like people could stop and then we'll talk to them while they're playing cornhole. Dude, cornhole takes three hours. <laughs> Funeral in front of the casket, cornhole boards. All right, so what are we thinking for the showing, for the wake? Well, uh, we'll have the poster boards up. Um, we'll have the uh, we'll have the casket there. You know, maybe we'll just have some cornhole to kind of get people, you know, a little lighten it up a little bit. Funeral this Sunday. There's cornhole. Oh shit, I'm going. <laughs> Trying to get people at the shows. <laughs> hey, tickets this Saturday, dude. Hey, there's cornhole outside. Oh shit, I'm going. Cornhole? Did you hear Polizzi's having cornhole in front in front of his show? He's oh, having dude. what? We gotta go. Who's playing? Who's playing? Who's playing a full game? Oh my god! Have you ever played a full game? No. Well, I always it's quit. Sucks is, yeah, it's inevitable that like you can't because it, it has that rule where like you have to win by more, but you can't go over 21. So then, event, you know, you're never winning by more than what you're supposed to. And you always go over 21. And then you got to revert back to the 13. And you're like, I've been here standing in the sun for an hour and 45 minutes. Can somebody please just end this godforsaken game? Can we bring back throwing the Frisbee? Like, I'd rather throw a frisbee a thousand times more than play cornhole. I don't have to keep track of shit. What's the points? I don't know how to play. Don't make fun of me because I'm going to air ball every like just can we just throw a fucking like football or something? Vortex throw balls. Football. For, dude, that is throw football. They're just you can like talk. Right. Can we just do something without keeping score? That's my whole life. Can we just not keep score? Holy shit. Oh my god, dude. bro! F- we won, pussy, uh, dude. Shut up! Oh my god, can we just just shut up and throw this ball? Oh my god, <laughs> can we just not Jenga? I'm like, dude. If I see one well, more Jenga a- tower, do you know how about I just want to fucking <laughs> every Jenga tower? Every time I see a Jenga tower, shut up! Dude, I just want to wreck a dude, and I don't want to kick down a Jenga tower. I want to tackle a Jenga tower like Brian Urlacher. Head up, grab cloth. That would be sweet. Every Jenga tower. Tackling, tackling, dude, next YouTube video. I tackled every Jenga tower downtown. (laughs) While they're playing and shit. Uh, Being all careful. Full pads. Dude, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> the the Burger King uh NFL theme music's going on in the background. The burner Hey, what jersey? What jersey? Lance Briggs. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, hey, hey. Uh fuck. Hey, all mesh big holes, Bishop Dullahan Camp jersey. <laughs> No, no. You got a coach God, too. We, You're the coach. I'm the player. Shut up. Who is that? Who's that linebacker? Who's that linebacker for the Colts, dude? The Pratsky? Fucking, the dude from I, the the dude from Iowa. Pat Angerer. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Angerer fifty one. <laughs> white helmet. White helmet. Gray face mask with the bar in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Pants on, full pad practice style. Hey, hey, just hey, just, just at every bar downtown Indy, every girl, what the fuck? Oh my god, literally smells like shit. Hey, every guy though. <laughs> I don't know, man. Ah, dude, you'd run into some hot heads. What are you gonna do? I'm in full pads. Come at me, dog. <laughs> I wish somebody would try me with full pads on. You, they're trying to like punch you and beat you up. You just like strip sack them. That's hilarious, bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't look, look, look. Mouthpiece like, screen. <laughs> <laughs> so sick. Uh, like, I want to make it clear. Like, I love, I love playing euchre. Like, I love 
I know you don't. I hate like, every game ever. I love playing Euchre. I can get down with I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to be, you know, I don't want people to listen to this and be like, oh, these guys, they just like hate on everything. Like that's not the what I, what we're saying is just that like everybody just thinks that you just Yeah, and like cornhole. And then everybody so it's just like, oh yeah, oh, totally. That's definitely that's that's it. That's the answer. Like, no, nah, come on. You know? No, nah, you're right though. You're right. Um, I will play Jenga and play corn. There's games that are fun. Playing Euchre, Can Jam's fun. Tossing the football. We can be active. We can have fun, but don't just throw cornhole out there as the idea and be like, oh, yeah. Like, it's just, it's the new beer pong. You remember, like, back when we were in high school, everybody's like, pong, dude. We can play some pong. We can play some pong. We can play some beer pong. What's, like, happening at the like, party? Oh, yeah, I want to. Yeah, like you're like, I want to be in high school and I want to be in college. And like, that's what you do. You like drink beer and you play beer pong. And then you're like, oh, wait a second. Like, I actually think that there's better options here. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. There's better options. Dude, I went to a party in L.A. like not too long ago, like kind of a cool party. <clears throat> all there was to do is beer pong. Still, I was like, that's it. That's all we're doing. There's music. There's just like 50 people in the backyard in beer pong. That was the only, and I was like, there was like a photo booth, but uh, I was like, I guess this is all it really is. You're just talking to different people and playing beer pong. Have you ever, uh, fuck. have you ever done? Well, that's another thing that's funny is that I think my buddy Dave Damashek or someone was talking about how this evolution of like everything has to be. Like every, like it started out where it's like beer pong and cornhole and cool. And now you'll pop up on Instagram. Like I guarantee you'll see this. Like a pop up on Instagram or TikTok. It's like the perfect game of the summer. And it's like a mix of every single one of them. Oh. Like you're like golfing a volleyball into a giant bucket that's set up like a cornhole. Like how you, or dude, it's like, what is even, what is this? I know. So I got to get a golf club, a volleyball, net, bowling pins. Huh? <laughs> spike ball. Remember the spike ball craze? Uh, I was like, oof, man, that's a tough one for me to get into. <laughs> I feel like you could get into pickleball. I really like pickleball, not a rep- reminiscent podcast when we played it in freshman PE. I was like, this is sick. I was like, is this game like, is this a game like our like PE teacher made up with his dad or is this right a real sport? It was so fun. And now, now it's real as shit, dude. It's everywhere. Oh, yeah. I got my mom a pickleball racket for her birthday. Like there's courts everywhere. They're supposed to be in the Olympics. No way. I get down with that. That's like, it's similar. You're like, okay, it's like ping pong, tennis, like you're active. And it's not something you're playing at a party. Mm-hmm. You're going to actively play pickleball. Yeah. That's totally different. Guy who goes too hard just, at parties. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to be at a party. Yeah. Where it's just like, nobody asks if anybody wants to play something, who's got next in anything. Like, let's just talk, listen to music, drink, laugh. Like, that's it, dude. I don't just five. Come on. You don't want to. No, I don't. I really, I'm sorry. Just like, it's nothing against you guys. It's nothing against you guys. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to do anything. It just turned every party just turns into five guys sitting in the lawn chairs talking about Brett Favre. That's it. Nobody else there. (laughs) Every party turns into that. What do you want to do then? Just me and four other guys talk about when Brett Favre threw that pass for the Vikings. The last second. And he had a gray undershirt on from Coles. <laughs> <laughs> this just turns into this. Po- every party turns into this podcast. Perfect. That's why the clubhouse continues to grow. Because everybody's like, yes, I'm tired of feeling the pressure to play fucking bags or cornhole or whatever it is. Bags. We talk about the gray. I remember that. I did that video about cornhole a couple summers ago. And the amount of comments I got, it's like, it's bags, bro. I'm like, cool. Glad I'm not at the party with you. <laughs> bags, dude. Make me want to play it less. You can't. Yeah, you'd be proud of me. I, uh, <clears throat> 
I just told I just I just I just totally backed out of a fantasy league today. Oh hell yeah. Wow. I bet you feel amazing. Never it felt better. Like, just I, I'm not doing dude, it. So I, did, <laughs> I, I did that Seinfeld fantasy video, right? I yeah, that was great. For Seinfeld, you know, thank you. But so that video, of course, gets sent in the group chat of this league that I was in. Perfect. You knew you like, wanted it to tags. happen. You wanted that to happen. <laughs> and so I just I just sent back. I'm like, and, I, you know, they talk all the time and it's. To be honest, I only know like three out of the 12 guys in the league. So obviously I have it on mute because like, I don't, what am I going to talk about in there? Yeah. But I see that and I just like wanted to reassure him like, hey, like it's not personal. It's just like, it was a good idea that I thought would do well. Anyways. So then these guys start kind of like coming at me a little bit, like saying some shit. And so I was just like, you know what? I just fucking cowherd. I just go, Oh, sent three middle finger emojis, left the conversation. See ya. <laughs> no way. Were they guys you like will see around? That's crazy. No, never. Oh, see ya then. Yeah, right. Bye. It's it's th- it's three guys that I actually know. One of them I talk to on a regular basis who I consider like a real actually good friend. But the, it was just like they thought, hey, you maybe you'd want to. This would be cool. I was like, yeah, sure. At the time, like, I, so I already had a season under my belt that I was in it. And even throughout that, they would kind of just like, you know, it was always like if I commented in the group chat, everybody was like, whoa, hey, we finally got it. And I'm like, uh-huh, OK. And then today when that I was like, you know what? Peace. Good for you, man. That is so true, though, in group messages. Like, do I have to respond every seven? Are you guys my girlfriends? Like, what? You guys are going to get mad at me for not responding? I've maybe responded twice in every group chat I've ever been in my entire life, and it's always the first two. What's up? Yep, this is uh, this is Benny. Send. Never talk again for the rest of the whole thing. Yeah, I. Dude, group anyways. chats. Sorry. Sorry you're so mad at me. Yeah, it felt good though. It felt good. So hey, I'm excited. You're <laughs> you are coming to town. You're coming to you're 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 coming back home, right? Mm, yeah, next week. Yeah. I thought it was this week. Yeah, this week. My bad. Whoops. Yeah, this Friday. And guy nice. who knows more about what I'm doing than me. Always for sure. Thank you for doing that because I have no idea. But yeah, you're right. It's this this Friday. We should like <laughs> All right, join a that. fantasy football league and play Jenga or something. <laughs> well, I was about to say Friday night, going out with some people, having a little get together for my birthday. W- would love to. Oh, let's love go. To have you make an appearance. Quite literally at a place where some of those games will be happening. So. Can we? All right. Only if I can. Could, could, shows up full pads. <laughs> Briggs could, could jersey two on. for one. All right. Uh, we got some catching up to do here on uh, on TG. Can't wait. So the clubhouse. I love. Room. I love some clubhouse uh, questions. Team these guys at gmail.com. Uh, this is from Jesse. Subject line Bryant Big Country Reeves. <laughs> hey, boys. Wondering if you guys have a similar story or can relate. I live up in Canada and grew up going to Vancouver Grizzly games. I'll never forget one night. This is probably 0203. Grizzlies were getting killed at home per usual. Fourth quarter comes around and my dad hits me with a hey, let's get out of here and beat traffic. I'm disappointed, but we head towards the exits anyways. Get out to the parking lot, hop in the truck, tune into the game, and sure enough, Grizzlies are on a 21-0 run in the fourth. As we drive back home over the bridge, we listen to the Grizzlies win in OT. (sighs) Biggest comeback in franchise history and one of the lone bright spots of their time in Vancouver. I've got two little ones now and have vowed to never leave a game early no matter the score. The trauma ends with me. Anyways, love the show, boys. Slap my ass with a Mike Bibby sweatband while I'm charging down the <laughs> sideline of the warehouse with Mike Allstott in NFL Street. Oh, man. Jesse from Canada. <laughs> love I know you, I know you got some traffic stories. 
That's <clears throat> I think it's always worth leaving early because that only happens like one one out of every 100 times you've ever gone to a game. Oh, they come came back in one. I know there's a bad one that I regret, but. Bro, me and my dad will literally go to a sporting event for one quarter and leave. <laughs> What is the point of even doing that? Because like um, the, we got the tickets. I don't know. Like it would feel bad if you don't use them. So you go for a little bit. But it's like, all right, let's get out of here. dude. <laughs> and how, how does that? Is it a look that he gives you that you give him? How does it come about? I don't know. There's just like you hit like a certain point. And it's like, all right, you're trying to get, you know, like the game's a little slow. It's not a great game. It's like. 13 to 3 for way too long. It's like, let's go, dude. Things are taking too long. If you really don't like the team, it's like, cool, we did something today. I know, but isn't it like more of a hassle to, you know, get in the car, go down there in the traffic, find somewhere to park, walk to the stadium? Oh, yeah, it's it's the worst thing ever. But it's like, what do we do? We have these tickets. What are we doing? We got the tickets. <laughs> Like, even if it, dude, I'm going to be honest. No, I'm not going to say it. Never mind. You know, no, you have to. What? Dude, even if it's like a game that like, oh, I can't wait to see the Colts play the, you know, Vikings on Christmas Eve. Or, you know, it's just like the the best game of all time. I'm even like, bro, you trying to be trapped? You trying to get out of here? Like, even on that game, too. Super Bowl? What do you say we... <laughs> it's just dude live sporting events sometimes i'm like way better on tv is that just me yeah, there's, there, there's a lot of a lot of dead time a lot of time you're looking around you're <laughs> like yeah I, what what is going on here i had a chance to go to like the champ sports bowl in orlando and i was like no i mean like what <laughs> there's just some about a live sporting event i'm like i mean i guess i'll just look at these people around me for fucking ever i don't want to dude i'm hating on too much shit today <laughs> No, I. It, I mean, it, it, like the, the the viewing experience at home is great, but like if I'm going to a game once or twice a year, like I'm gonna I'm gonna go, you know. I'm yeah. Gonna, but if for the clubhouse out there, they will be happy to know, and this makes me feel even better that I have been to two football games in the full duration of the game with Ben. Yeah. See, like I'll go to the whole game and have fun, but like, I don't know when you're just the vibe is uh, yeah, I was with my dad. He was like, I don't really care. And I'm like, all right, let's just go get something to eat. Like, that's just how it was. And that's how it is. A hundred percent of the time is. me and my dad go to games. But like when I'm with somebody else and it's like a good time, <laughs> like I'm in it. It always feels like a victory when you leave and like, yeah, you're you, you can hear the cheer from behind you in the stadium and you're just like, <laughs> like streets are clean right now, bitches. You know, like you, you, you're on your own. You feel like you're in your own little world. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. there is a little bit of pride that I think every guy just wants to feel when you, when you beat the traffic. But then you think about it and you're like, right. everybody's trying to beat traffic. So are we beating traffic? And sometimes I do get sad, like fourth quarter Pacers, Pacers game. Nobody in the stands. I'm like, kind of feel bad for these guys. But let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, this is from Brendan. <clears throat> hey, guys. Love the pod. Joey, can you do an Al Michaels impression for this particular play? Chiefs, Bills, final play of the game. Allen trying to connect with Khalil Shakir. The pass is dropped in the end zone and clock runs out. Also, would your parents ever give your family the green light to leave after communion? Or did you have to stick it out at church for the whole thing? Come to Toronto, Canada. Um, I think that's directed towards both of us. The first part was just uh, me for Michaels. Hell yeah. I got some Michaels coming. I got some Michaels coming, Brendan, so stay tuned for that. Um, a lot of Canada love today. This is crazy. Uh, yeah, dude. Leaving after communion? Now we're talking. Yeah. My mom was always green light. Peace. No looking back. Get the communion. See you never. Beaten traffic. My dad totally against it. <laughs> Not leaving early. <laughs> we got to get father's mm. blessing at the end. <laughs> what is this? I was going to say, is Coach Pete like shaken up with father after? Is he big into that? 
Coach P will make eye contact after church and be like, and walk out, you know, <laughs> on some good game shit. I always love shaking the priest's hand after mass as if it's like, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, like I'm telling him good game. Like he really appreciates that. I'm just like, that was great today, Father. Dude, what, what? if you talking to a I'm priest? A hey, you really fucked that homily up, Father. Let's get it. Like, what if you said that to a priest, dude? Would he be like, let's go? Or would he be like? Probably a little taken back, but I'm <laughs> sure there's a priest out there to get down with it. You went off yeah, on I that homily. I always homily. do that, though. And I swear to God, it's just like these things, they just happen. Like a switch just flips and like, I don't mean to do that. I just like, you go into like uh, auto mode and you just dive into it when in these situations like that. I, I like sitting here right now, I'd be like, why the hell would you shake the priest's hand? Like, it's like you're congratulating him on a job well done. What but else when do you I, do? When I see the priest after mass, I'm like. Father, thank you. Great. Have a great one. That was great today. What? I think that's good. It's just like anybody after anybody does anything. Yeah, but he didn't give a shit. I think he does. A little a little a little compliment. Hey, that story about the whatever. He would he would like that, right? I don't know. Priests are just different <laughs> ass animals. That's true. That's true. That's true. You connected, yeah, Father. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I talk about it in my act a lot about how that shit would go down where, like, it was all up to my mom, and we'd, we'd watch every week, and, like, some, most of the time she wasn't about it, but sometimes she would be about it, and it was a very exciting time. When leaving early? Would be about leaving early. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. <laughs> you know you're having a good night. Um, you, you know you you know you like ahead. behaved well in church when your mom when you dip after communion. You're like, oh shit, we might get pizza later. Like, I was just about to say at, we might at stop this rate, steak and shake for breakfast. <sighs> at this rate, bro, like we could do anything. We might go to the we might go to like the Disney store in the mall. Forbidden territory for me. Why? Just because it was so like, it, I don't know, man. It was just like, I I had to be so good to be able to go to the Disney store. I don't know why. It was just really annoying for my mom or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think about having Amy as our guest, as our first guest on these guys, because I just have so many questions. <laughs> she would love it. Never happened. She would yeah. love it. Uh, this is from Watson. <clears throat> Subject line, Gus Ferrat. <laughs> What's up, guys? Four-time emailer. Put up the four. Put up the four. First, I want to thank Benny for choosing Carolina as his Cinderella team. As a Panthers fan, we're begging for some life, too. My favorite sports commentator line comes from the greatest season for Monday Night Football back in 2000 when Dennis Miller was the color analyst. Oh. Some guy got laid out. And Miller goes, he went Quasimodo on his melon. <laughs> best of luck and whip my ass with a 1990s nfl starter jacket oh yes wow that was like peak monday night football as a child was that like weird abc felt like the packers vikings were playing every, every week on monday time, night football man <laughs> and i wish they would have yeah i remember that it was like such a big deal my mom and my aunt would not stop talking about Dennis Miller on Monday Night Football. Like it's a, it's like a right. peak memory in my life. I'm like, why was that such a big deal? Because it was like new, because and he, they had like a celebrity guy on, and he was probably yeah, hot. Like he's he's just a comedian. Like he's just a comedian. He was on SNL and like a talk show host and shit. And then he's just on Monday Night Football. That was cool though. I was like, oh, they're trying <laughs> stuff. They're like get, getting crazy. Monday Night Football, dude, that's... I I did always... Why didn't they keep doing that? You know how the, they'll have like Lil Wayne on first take every now and then? Throw him in the booth. I think they do that now with the Manning cast. Like that's what the Manning cast is for. Yeah, that's cool. And those guys will hold it down. But you get like a, you know... 
Get somebody wild in there, like Dennis Miller. It's a different, different vibe in the booth. Different vibe in the booth. I remember he did there. I saw there was like some graphic on. I think it might have been Sports Center. I don't know, but like he had a lot of like comments and stuff that didn't hit. They like didn't go. They were funny. Like if you get it, but I think a lot of stuff he said bombed, unfortunately. But I'm glad he like said it anyway. But I think a lot of I, th- I think a lot of that shit wasn't great. But I swear to God, dude, my mom, my aunt talked about it for four and a half months. I was like, okay. <laughs> oh my God. Are we still talking about Dennis Miller on Monday Night Football? Jesus Christ. What a what a time in my life. Three things I remember. And that's one of them. <laughs> Just me. This is from Grant. I think he's a first time emailer. I don't remember seeing this name, but says QB songs and Brett Favre. <laughs> Perfect. Boys, love the pod. I send it to friends every chance I get. I also want to thank Joey for putting me on your story a few months ago, seeing the Frank Caliendo Brett Favre's back song while I threw a historical bowling alley touchdown pass, touchdown passing game score. In the spirit of girls don't like boys, girls like Dan Marino <laughs> and Brett Favre's back. What would be the what would God? I can't read. What would be the your best picks for songs with QB innuendo. Slap my ass with a turducken as John Madden gives out the galloping gobbler. Best grant. P.S. If you guys need a spot in the Miami football program, I got you. Oh, Miami yeah. football program. Like the Canes. Cool. Oh my God. Yeah, I remember this. I remember the story. I remember the story. Pretty simple. You tag me, Ben, or something with Brett Favre making fun of him on Instagram. We're gonna repost it. So every single uh, time. Uh, girls don't like boys. Girls like Dan Marino. Classic hit. Where have all the QB names gone? Oh, Doug Flutie. That's another great one. Frank Tarkenton. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Randall Gunning. Joe Kitten is a classic. Jeff Garcia. John. John. J O N. John. John Kitna. Just holding it down for every team ever. Respect. You just know. He coaches high school football somewhere now. And you know he does a great job. They may they may not win state every year, but you know, like, hey, the GPA on that team, those guys are opening doors for people. Mm-hmm. He's turning boys into men. <laughs> hey, we're gentlemen. <laughs> from we're gentlemen <laughs> off the field in the classroom. When we get on the field, that flip switches. Boys. <laughs> Dude, no, no word a co- uh, high school coach loves more than gentlemen. Shut the fuck, dude. If I hear that one more time, gentlemen. All right, and the worst <laughs> from Dave. He's got an answer about our Pittsburgh basketball team. Oh. He says, "What up, Burpee boys? If Pittsburgh had a basketball team, it'd be a rebirth of the ABA franchise, the Pittsburgh Pipers. Except instead of navy and orange, they'd be black and gold." Listen to last week's pod while wearing my Pittsburgh Piper shirt that I got in the strip district while visiting the fam. Thanks, guys. P.S. Should actually know about this? <laughs> Slap my ass with a copy of NCA04 for PS2. <laughs> what a guy. What a great guy. Pipers, See, though? Yeah, I like it. They probably had a really cool I was, logo. I was thinking about, yeah, like when, when that question got asked last uh, week, I was like, I know they have a history of professional basketball there. And I couldn't, I, and I know that it started with a P because it, everything else there besides the Steelers is going to start with a P. Mm-hmm. Panthers, Penguins, Pirates, Pipers. But I just couldn't put my finger on it. But yeah, that makes sense. I could see that happening. I'm going to look up the logo here and see what we got. And I wonder what the, see, I'm wondering what the tie in was. You know what I mean? Like why, if it's just because it started with a P or what the reasoning was about why they went with pipers (laughs) 
I don't know. Anyways, all right. Yeah, it looks it looks kind of like uh, well, Ben, you just look it up. It's got a ball above the eye as a dot in the eye. This thing, it's kind of like a script font a little bit. Yep. <laughs> oh, on the jersey, on the jersey, I was talking about. Oh, uh, but bullet. yeah, that's so logo. bullets. Yep, yep, yep. Bull. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. The bullets. Yeah. Uh, this is from George. I don't think I've seen this name before either, so that's cool. From George, NFL Jersey Mental Photoshop. Hey, fellas, what's a former or current NFL player would you like to see in a jersey they've never worn before, and what number would they wear? For example, I think I'd like to see Antonio Gates in a number 80 49ers jersey because I think it just feels right. Thanks for the incredible content. Keep up the great work. Slap my ass with the force of Mark Sanchez's face into Brandon Moore's rear during the butt fumble on Thanksgiving Day 2012. George from San Diego. Uh, okay, this is this is fun. This is interesting here. Um, Antonio, Antonio Gates on the 49ers with 80. God, I've never even thought about that. <laughs> Dead air. Uh. <laughs> Thinking thinking who you got i thought of one but it's kind of whack let me hear it i thought of justin jefferson would look good in the tampa bay buccaneers uniforms <laughs> that's got to be some that's i don't know why but like it's just like i don't know i think it would just work that's funny you said that because i was thinking antonio brown and like the 1998 vikings uniforms oh god that'd be great I don't know why. It's just the first thing that came to mind. It's always a receiver. All right. They, I mean, they're going to make anything look good. You know what would be hilarious, I think, is uh, Big Ben wearing a Ravens uniform. Ooh, that would look good. That would look good. He, he looked pretty scary if he went visor. Yeah, he can make a, he can kind of make any you know actually him and like you know he would look really bad in is like a Seahawks uniform. Put like a classic white guy in a Seahawks uniform. <laughs> Sorry. And they hey, you know what? They look like Matt Hasselbeck who did play for the Seahawks. Loose sleeves. It's just not great. It's like Peyton Manning in the Bronco like <laughs> Peyton Manning needs like traditional like Peyton Manning would look great in like a obviously it's because Eli Manning but like a Giants jersey Peyton Manning would rock that hard um, you know like some like yeah just straight up yep Peyton Manning in the Jets really uniform easy. bingo put Peyton Manning in a Seahawks uniform it's okay I'm good on that leaving that game early I Peyton Manning and the uh, all black Carolina Panthers uniforms, <laughs> the silver helmet. I mean, the, well, they they do have like some kind of traditional jerseys, but like a hey, Peyton Manning in the gradient Atlanta Falcons jerseys. Get out of here! No chance with the weird. Yeah, true. Go home. Peyton, yeah, you're right. Peyton Manning is a good like. He, he he's a good prototype on this of just. If your uniform is going to look good with anything, imagine Peyton Manning in it. <laughs> That's how you know. Or just like your offensive, like your Peyton. right guard. <laughs> <laughs> Every time a, like a school gets like new, like sick jerseys, I'm like, picture the white, the right guard in those. I'm like, I don't know. Man. So true, dude. Yeah, you're like, okay, the corner and the wide receiver, are they're going to be fine. The running back, yeah, you're going to figure it out. Big nasty sixty eight right guard. Come on. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, let's do one more here from Pat. I'm trying to go with people, and just keep emailing in if you email in a lot. But I just there's people who are emailing in for the first time, I think, and so I want to get to hell that. yeah uh, from Pat Chris Duhan is a subject. nice love Guys. that name. First time, long time. Love the pod. Not a sports podcast, not a Jersey podcast, but whatever happened to vest uniforms in Major League Baseball? 
I feel like for a period of time growing up, a lot of teams were ditching the sleeves for a t-shirt underneath a vest, and you just don't see it anymore. Curious your thoughts on vest unis in baseball and some of the ones that you remember. For me, I always liked the look and can distinctly remember the Rockies, Royals, Reds, Pirates, and Diamondbacks. Slot mask with the blue and red Sammy Sosa mitt while watching old highlights of Glenn Allen Hill hit a moonshot to the rooftops on Waveland Avenue while Chip Carey and Steve Stone lose their mind on WGN. Oh, WGN. Oh, God. WGN was so soothing. Throw WGN on at like 5 p.m. Cubs are playing. Just just grew up with that, dude. Yeah. God, I love. Coming home from school, flipping that on. What else was on WGN? Nothing like Bob a Judge Tom, Judy. Bob and, was, Bob and Tom was for a little bit. That's yeah. sick. Did the Bulls play on WGN? Yeah. Oh my god. Sure. I feel like WGN. That was like a that was like a pirated TV channel. I was like when when I saw WGN on a TV, I was like, how do we? Where are we? <laughs> this is awesome. That was always one of the first ones I would flip to. I flipped to channel 98 because I was like, if you got WGN, it's going to be 98. And I'd flip to 98 and there we'd see. But it was it was yeah, that I feel like the. Go ahead. Was it was WGN a regional thing? Because I swear I watched WGN national. in Florida one time. Is not that's why that's a big reason why the Cubs have so many fans, is because they are they were a national television station that you'd have on basic cable or whatever, and the Cubs that was the home of the Cubs, and just like how there's a bunch of Braves fans all over the place because uh, TNT. Oh my Braves God! Games. I did not TBS. even realize that the yeah. Braves always did play on that. I think it was TNT. It was one of those. Because I, I I can remember but, on being on spring break when I was like 12 years old and going to WGN and the Cubs were on. I was like, why is this? Why do we have this channel? Notre Dame tried to do that with NBC. Yeah, dude. They, they kind of did. Does anybody that's else have that contract? NBC. Yeah, that's what they did. It's a dope move. Uh, well, no, uh, so they they did it, and I think the first year they did it was '93, when NBC had that deal with Notre Dame, and yeah, now now no, I still don't think anybody does it. I'm thinking about it. like they had the Longhorn Network, like different schools try to make their own type of things like that, but NBC and Notre Dame is still like the only like there's nobody who's just Fox, or there's nobody who's just ESPN or ABC or whatever. You know, a little play on there, but it's not like every home game, like Notre Dame, every home game is on NBC or Peacock now. They're trying to do that. That is such a good idea. Yeah. I mean, the oldest idea right. ever, but what, what did that guy say? <laughs> such a good idea. It started in 1993. <laughs> I just never really thought about it. Like the Braves one really got me. That got me good. It was like, no uh, wonder the, like, I always kind of like felt for the Braves and that's why, dude. I was, I was like, why do I kind of like Chipper Jones for some weir- weird reason? It's because they were just on your TNT hot? and they were just on at my grandma's house for no reason. That's crazy. Exactly. What was the question? That's it. That homie asked. Uh, oh, the vests. Yeah. Vests in Major League Baseball. I love them. I can only remember the Reds and Rockies, but I remember the Pirates. Oh, Pirates have the sick. Everything the Pirates do is so cool, but they don't wear the vests anymore. No, nah, but I, there's rumors because of all the Pittsburgh people I follow, there's rumors swirling about that they're bringing them back and or bringing them back the hint bread. I love that. Whenever a logo has like a, a million different colors, Pirates, Chicago Blackhawks, like I think it just pops so much more. Uh, Memphis Tigers, when the tiger used to be orange, <laughs> then they just got rid of it. <laughs> yeah. God, that was so sick on the side of D'Angelo Williams' helmet. Orange Tiger. I was like, mm. Memphis, underrated, cool school. Yeah. You grew up with, you're like, oh, yeah. 
I love that. The pirates really have it down though. Uh, the, the pirate logo, like with the pirate guy in that P with the spikes. I'm like, that is like so a, sick. that's like a gang hat. That's not even like, that's how cool that is. Like it turned into like a, like a symbol. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. The, the, the actual pirate logo instead of just the P the secondary logo too sick. Too sick. Yeah. All right. Good stuff this week uh ben is in raleigh where can they get those tickets ben thursday raleigh pop out it's gonna be fun um get your tickets at benedictpolizzi.com i'll throw the ticket link right underneath the pod cool uh be on the lookout for like i said october running kind of starting with these guys and uh, yeah yeah good stuff team these guys at gmail.com keep the emails coming really appreciate everybody and uh you know like i said clubhouse in saratoga uh people that just keep following up with us and um we look forward to i look forward to it every week and then hearing from you guys and just uh creating the old clubby the old clubhouse man so it's really really fun dude i love this podcast good shit um i'm so glad you guys get it i love you clubhouse come out and see us you guys really mean honestly the most to us and the emails can't thank you guys enough it's just it's just a good feeling knowing that you guys are just like just you get it so keep sending them in. We love it. I love sit like this. This is the best like hour. I don't know. And mm. I don't know if anybody knows this inside clubhouse. We record this on a Monday and bro looking forward to a Monday is nothing I've ever done in my life. But because of this podcast, man, because of you guys, it's the best part of the week. So couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And now we're crying. So good deal. I will uh, cry about right. the clubhouse. <laughs> Well, go see Ben and Raleigh. Uh, get your tickies, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Griff Whalen. Carnell Lake. <laughs> Griff Whalen, though, from where? Why can't I Stanford. think of it?